Hello friends, my name is Radha Masood. Today we shall discuss about a topic, the PMP exam content outline. Friend, today's topic is very interesting and very important, especially if you are a person who, uh, who is willing or interested to give the exam of PMP. So let's uh, start. First of all, I would request to please subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell option as well so that many videos can reach to you. So let's uh, start. PMP exam content outline is basically based on three domain areas. First one is the people then uh, the uh, process and then uh, the third one is the business environment so the people domain is basically based on the soft skills of a project manager that how he will be able to manage the people actually because people there are so many stakeholders are there so this is basically talk about people management so this domain is basically of 50 42 percent of the whole exam actually okay uh, first of all, it, it contains the different tasks. First uh, task one is manage the conflicts between different stakeholders, team management. Task two, leading a team from the front. Task three, support team performance wherever they need any uh, support. Task four, empower team members and stakeholders by your attitude wherever it is possible so that you can support them. Task five, ensure team members and stakeholders are adequately trained. If they need any proper training, online training, or they, they need any on-site training, so you should be able to uh, arrange that training. Build a team. Task is the uh, build a team. And build a team means that uh, team coherence should be there, team understanding should be there, team should rely on each other, and they should work as a team as a whole. Task 7, address and remove the impediments, obstacle and blockers for the team. For example, uh, you have noticed that uh, any particular stakeholder is not providing the information. So you should be able to uh, address them. You should be able to talk with them and, and remove any problem which is arising for the team. You should be able to uh, remove that. Task 8, negotiate project agreements, uh, contracts, uh, the documentation uh, should be uh, negotiable by you. Task 9, collaborate with a stakeholder wherever it is necessary like meetings, status calls, etc. Task 10, build shared understanding uh, through uh, like for example through emails, through status meetings, uh, through telephone calls. Task 11, engage and support virtual teams. Uh, virtual teams means the teams which are not on site. For example, one team is sitting in USA and one team is sitting in India and one sitting in Pakistan. So this is an example of virtual team. Task 12, define team ground rules, that how they will play, La play means that how they will act accordingly. Task 13, a mentor a relevant stakeholder, wherever they need some uh, mentoring, so you should provide it. Task 14, promote team performance through the application of emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence means that you are using your emotional emotions intelligently, okay, as a uh, helping for you, so that uh, your emotions uh, should be helpful for you. The next domain is the process. Process is basically a 50% of the exam. There are 180 questions in total in the exam. So 50% of the uh, exam is basically from uh, the process. So you can understand this is the biggest domain for the PMP exam. Task 1, execute project with the urgency required to deliver business value. Uh, this is very important that you should create some urgency like everyone should be on toes and uh, working urgently or giving the priority actually. Task to manage the communication. Communication means that you should be able to uh, communication, written communication, verbal communication, uh, communication through your body language should be managed properly. Okay. Uh, task three: assess and manage the risk. Any issues which you are thinking that they can occur in future, you should be able to manage it. Engage the stakeholders. Uh, that means you should be able to engage the stakeholder through meetings, uh, status calls, etc. Task 5, plan and manage the budget, cost and resources. Task 6, plan and manage the schedule, project schedule. Task 7, plan and manage the quality of products and deliverables. Task 8, plan, uh, plan and manage the scope. Scope means the boundary of the del deliverables which you are going to deliver. Task 9, integrate project planning activities. Task 10, manage the project changes. Where any change which is not mentioned in the scope document we should consider this as a change request. Task 11, plan and manage procurement. What hardware, software you need to procure and purchase, it should be properly managed. 
manage project or uh, task 12 manage project artifacts artifacts means the documents especially things like source code uh, the documentation like scope document function specification it should be managed task 13 determine the appropriate project management methodology methods and practices either you will use the uh, waterfall approach either you will use the agile approach either you will use the hybrid approach task 14 establish project governance structure how will you govern the things task 15 how manage the project issues how whatever the issues will be arising in the project what is your approach that how will you manage it task 16 ensure knowledge transfer for project continuity like any uh, team member who is resigning from your company and so how will you make sure that the knowledge is properly transferring to other uh, person task 17 plan and manage project uh, phase closure and the transitions as well okay uh, so we have discussed the process then the next one is the uh, third one is the business environment business environment is the 8% of the total PMP exam it contains the task one uh, plan and manage the project compliance compliance means that for example whatever the project you are going to execute what are the things you are going to uh, manage you should have to make sure that it should be compliance with your organization with the government uh, strategy with the government rules it should be compliant uh, with any third party vendors etc it should be compliant in uh, all the in terms of security in terms of government rules in terms of uh, organization rules as well task to evaluate and deliver project benefits and the value whatever the benefits whatever the uh, objectives were defined uh, earlier in the project charter you should be able to evaluate it either you are uh, achieving that those or not task 3 evaluate and address external business environmental changes for impact on a scope for example uh, for example like suppose any major change for example government is changing for example any regulatory authority is changing so etc what happened in that case as well you should be able to uh, aware about that task force support organizational changes that means if there is any change in your organization for example see uh, new ceo is coming for example technical lead is uh, replacing by some other person for example any organizational changes hierarchy is changing uh, so what happened in that case and how will you manage it accordingly so uh, friend uh, thank you thanks a lot for uh, watching the video i hope uh, you like this video if you like it please uh, share it with your friends and colleagues and uh, thanks a lot for watching the video thank you friends